a target education decided that in these really dark and depressive times we need to brighten your mood a little bit. So that's why we decided to organize free IELTS lessons. And today's lesson will be about IELTS listening part and I really hope that you will find this lesson instructive and helpful. So let's get started. So as you know, uh, in IELTS we have several tips. Just a minute. So uh, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to start with basic info and several tips. So basic information about IELTS is that there are four questions and four parts, aka sections. By aka mean also known as. I think that you guys must be informed that there has been some several changes made by a British Council. And right now, sections are not called sections anymore. They are called parts. Okay. And uh, secondly, we have 30 seconds before and after each part. 30 seconds before, we need to read the questions carefully and underline a circle the keywords. Why do we need it? Because if you do not understand the question itself, you can't really get the answer for this question. So first, 30 seconds are really important. And 30 seconds after the part one or part two, three, so after the part, uh, as the instructions say, we need them to check our answers according to the instruction, but I will recommend that you simply use these 30 seconds to jump to another part and uh, start reading and identifying the keywords. So by identifying keywords, I mean do the same thing actually that you did here, because the level of the difficulty will, will rise according to the parts. And next, do not wait until the answers are mentioned. This is actually the common mistake of the old students that have just started preparing for the IELTS. So what do I mean by that? They simply read a question and they sit and they won't, they are waiting for the answers to hear. That's not going to happen actually, because if you know about it, guys, all the language uh, is always paraphrasing. I then tip number four, identify what part of speech is this word. I mean the missing word. You must understand what to put in it. Is it adjective, adverb or verb? Uh, and tip number five, be careful with singular and plural because they are really important. So you must be a really a careful listener. And tip number six, spelling is crucial, guys, really. Capitalization is not really important because look at this example. Mike, all right? So I wrote it with capital, but you see one letter is not here, the letter E. So that's why it will be incorrect. But if you write like that with all the letters or with small letters you are golden there is no problem with you so it's it will be correct and uh, when our tips part are over is over excuse me we're gonna move to part one and part four you guys you may be wondering why did we start from part one and four why are not we going in order like part one two three or four so i decided to look at these really parts because for me they are similar in some ways so first similarity is note completion or table completion because these parts usually have the same type of question which is note completion second similarity is the quantity of words because usually in both of these parts we do have only one word to complete so guys uh, about this one word and about writing how many words my personal advice Usually when we are taking the test, we are really nervous and we may be careless sometime. So if you read here two words only or one word only, I would advise you to simply put a number above it. Because when you read like in letters, you may simply overlook it or get distracted by something and write not one but two words. But if you put number here, you will definitely know it because you not you like read it you look at it and it will grab your attention so it's better better to put a number above this word if it's it's written here two you will put number two if it's written three you will put number three and uh about differences uh, usually in part four there are no pauses at all in part one this is really easy because we make pauses between the questions like from one to five and five to ten but in part one, we do not make any pauses, we go directly, we listen to the whole track. And secondly, the language is complicated. So in other ways, in, in other ways, part four, this is the more complicated version of part one. And the last difference is usually part four is a monologue. So a monologue is a speech by one person. 
And the last thing that I want to tell you guys, there has been also one change in part one. Do you remember that it was used to be an example in part one? Before listening to the track, we had an example. So right now we don't. So part one starts with the question number one. So I think this is all about tips and general info. Let's start practicing. So guys, it's time to do some practice. I chose uh, test number one from Cambridge 13. And today we're gonna practice section one, excuse me, part one and part four. So let's take a look at our tests. So firstly, I will show you how I usually analyze the questions. Uh, analyze I questions in the really way. Of course, it's not really neat. It's rather messy, but it's really helpful, like currency. So as you can see, I crossed out the section. Instead, I wrote part. And here, as you can see in the instruction, one word and or a number, I put a number because it's easier for me. And uh, do not forget that and or means that you can put a number as well, not only a word, but number as well. All right, so here we go. Example I crossed out as well, because right now in current latest tests, you're not gonna have an example given to you. You're gonna start directly from question number one. And okay, one second. So question number one, we should, first of all, we should focus what type of word we should put in it. Is it adjective, verb, or noun? So number one, how to. So logically, to, we're going to put a verb. Do something. So that's why I'm going to put a verb in here. How to do something and cook with seasonal products. Number two, other information, small classes, got it. Also offers classes. So offer is my keyword in here, as I have underlined already. What type of classes? So uh, they can be an adjective. Types of classes. Okay, number three. Clients who return get some percent of discount. Definitely, if it's discount, we're going to write a percent here. Usually it's a number. Next. So Bones Cookery School got it. Uh, food that is. Okay, so we have here is and we have noun. So logically, here is going to be an adjective. So that's why I'm going to put adjective in here. What kind of food? So what kind of food may be vegetarian? Okay, number five, includes recipes to strengthen your something. So strengthen your something, it's gonna be a noun. So strengthen is a keyword here. If I, uh, I mean, these words that I, I have already underlined, uh, they usually will have a paraphrase in the track. So they will not give you the answer in the form of strengthen your something. It, it will be a different word, absolutely, maybe build up or like in this example, make it stronger. So all of these underlined words will be definitely paraphrased. All right, let's continue. They have a free something every Thursday. So again, we're going to put a noun uh, because there is a and free. Already we have an adjective, so we need only a noun. What free they offer? All right, and the seven. Guys, uh, usually in questions like that, so when we write a name or address, usually it will be spelled. But it's not always like that. Sometimes you may guess yourself. If it's easy, I mean, if it's common one like the word red, black, saint, they're not gonna spell it, but is it, if it's new one, they will definitely spell it. Uh, next, question number eight, mainly food. So I underlined mainly because they will also have a paraphrase in the track. So mainly what type of food? Again, we're gonna write, maybe, yeah, it, it's gonna be adjective. Next, located near the. So it's gonna be placed definitely because of the word locate. And another thing, another keyword is near. So it will also have a paraphrase. And the last question is special course in skills with uh, something. It's gonna be a noun, is sometimes available. So I underline special course skills sometimes available because these underlined words may be paraphrased. Okay. So guys, before, before starting listening to our part one, I want you to tell one thing. Uh, usually, not usually, always you will use pencil only, but today I'm going to break this rule because <clears throat> we are not in real lessons. That's why I'm going to use some pen and highlighters. But for you guys, while you're doing some practice, I would not recommend you to use pen highlighter. I prefer to use pencil myself, but Right now I used a uh, pen in order for you to see it 
uh, clearly. All right, so let's listen, guys. We already analyzed. Let's listen to this track. <clears throat> Second. And you know that we will listen to this track only once. So that's why try to hear all of the answers. Test one. And you will have Greek class and an official at a tourist info. I believe there are some one day classes for tourists. Well, they're open to everyone, but tourists are always welcome. Okay, let me give you some details of what's available. There are several classes. One very popular one is at the food studio. The first cooking class is at the food studio. So studio has been written in the space. So they have given us an example. Center, Mike speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hi. I wanted to find out about cookery classes. I believe there are some one day classes for tourists. Well, they're open to everyone, but tourists are always welcome. Okay, let me give you some details of what's available. There are several classes. One very popular one is at the food studio. Okay. They focus on seasonal products, and as well as teaching you how to cook them, they also show you how to choose them. Right, that sounds good. How big are the classes? I'm not sure exactly, but they'll be quite small. And could I get a private lesson there? I think so. Let me check. Yes, they do offer those. Though, in fact, most of the people who attend the classes find it's a nice way of getting to know one another. I suppose it must be, yes. And this company has a special deal for clients where they offer a discount of 20% if you return for a further class. Okay. But you said there were several classes. That's right. Another one you might be interested in is Bonds Cookery School. They're quite new. They just opened six months ago, but I've heard good things about them. They concentrate on teaching you to prepare healthy food. And they have quite a lot of specialist staff. So is that food for people on a diet and things like that? I don't know if I'd be interested in that. Well, I don't think they particularly focus on low-calorie diets or weight loss. It's more to do with recipes that look at specific needs, like including ingredients that will help build up your bones and make them stronger, that sort of thing. I see. Well, I might be interested. I'm not sure. Do they have a website I could check? Yes. Just key in the name of the school. It'll come up. And if you want to know more about them, every Thursday evening they have a lecture at the school. It's free, and you don't need to book or anything. Just turn up at 7.30. And that might give you an idea of whether you want to go to an actual class. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Guys, but we're not going to look at these questions. We're not going to use our time. Okay, so we're going to move. And by the way, guys, one more piece of advice. Try to spend at least time as possible on section number one, part number one, because this is the easiest part. So uh, for the given 30 seconds, I would recommend you choose only 15 and then move forward and read part two, because after part one, part two is going to come like shock for you, okay? Because it's more, more difficult. And personal for me is the most difficult part. All right, let's continue. I think we are here. Okay, there's one more place you might be interested in. That's got a rather strange name. It's called the Aretza Center. That's spelled A double R E T S A. Okay. They've got a very good reputation. They do a bit of meat and fish cookery, but they mostly specialize in vegetarian dishes. Right. That's certainly an area I'd like to learn more about. I've got lots of friends who don't eat meat. In fact, I think I might have seen that school today. Is it just by the market? That's right. So they don't have any problem getting their ingredients. They're right next door. And they also offer a special two-hour course in how to use a knife. They cover all the different skills, buying them, sharpening, chopping techniques. It gets booked up quickly, though, so you'd need to check it was available. Right. Well, thank you very much. I'll go and check that out. 
All right, we are done already with section number one. I hope that you could find some answers to this question. And if you did, so let's check them. This, guys, how I usually work, but uh, right now I do not have the paper with questions, so I have written them down personally. So answers. Number one, how to choose and cook with the seasonal product. So Color Red shows you the answer, guys, okay? So how to choose and cook with the seasonal product. So the sentence that helped me actually in finding this answer teach you how to cook and choose. So as you can see, I have already, I have already cooked here. I have here the cook, so I don't need to put cook here. So, and he said, secondly, choose. So logically, choose goes there. All right, question number two, also offers private classes. So the answer is private, but how did I get the answer? So first the woman asked some, this kind of sentence, are there any private lessons? And the man answered, yes, they have those. So the answer logically will be private. All right, next. Three, clients who return get a 20% discount. Sorry, I forgot to make, I forgot to write it in red. So the answer is 20%. And the sentence that helped me was, if you return for a further class, so this is the paraphrase of this word, you will get a 20% discount. Question number four, food that is the answer healthy. So how did I get this answer with the help of this sentence? Concentrate on teaching you to prepare healthy food. So the, do you remember in the table, second table was focus and synonym for the word focus is to concentrate. So they concentrating or focusing on teaching you the healthy food. That's why I've written here healthy. Next, question number five includes recipes to strengthen your bone. So the, in red, the answer is bone. And what helped me? The sentence, it helps to build up or make your bones stronger. So you see, stronger, this is the paraphrase of the word strengthen. But strengthen, this is a verb, and stronger, this is an adjective. So in the track, they said, make your bones stronger. So I just found a match. That's why I have written bones. Question number six. They have a free lecture every Thursday. You know, guys, I didn't really get the paraphrase of this in the track. He's directly said, he directly said, have a free lecture. So it's gonna be a lecture. That was piece of cake. Next, seven, the Eretza Center. How did I know that it, uh, this address will be definitely spelled? Because he started with strange name. So if it is, if it's strange, it will be definitely spelled. So guys, this spelling is all 100% on you. You must be really careful listener. All right. So the spelling will be like that. A-R-R-E-T-S-A. -R -R -E Aretza. Question number eight. Mainly vegetarian food or dishes. Guys, the answer is vegetarian. And what helped me to get this answer? Because this man said they mostly specialize. And the synonym of the, of the word mainly will be mostly. So they specialize, specialize if you haven't forgotten yet. This is the synonym of the word focus, which is, its, which is in the second table. And synonym for the food, he said dishes. So they mostly specialize in preparing vegetarian dishes will be they mainly prepare vegetarian food. All right. Nine, located near the market. Market is my answer. And my paraphrase for the word near is just by the market. Oh, and the 10th, question number 10, the final question. Special course in skills with a knife is sometimes available. Guys, by the way, I also didn't find any paraphrase for this because they said special two hours course in skills with knife. So this is how I do uh, this is how I deal with questions from part one. And then we're going to start uh, part four. All right. And uh, right now, guys, we look at, we're going to look at part number four. Uh, section number four, part number four. And this is the one of the difficult parts, but it's not the most difficult because the second section is the most difficult for me. And uh, let's look at this. This part is also taken from Cambridge 13. 
test one, part four. So first we're gonna analyze the questions. And do not forget guys, usually part four is monologue, I mean speech by one person, and usually it is scientific based. Today we're gonna talk about facts of urban envir environments on animals. So again, the instruction, write one word only for each answer. As you can see, as usual, I put the number in order not to get distracted. Excuse me. And intro. Uh, all the words that I have underlined, they are keywords, I mean the important ones. And let's start reading. Recent urban developments represent massive environmental changes. It was previously thought that only a few animals were suitable for city life. Example. So well, what do we understand by that? So here in uh, question 31 and 32, there will be examples. Next, number one. The something is going to be a noun because of its general adaptability. By the way, I have forgotten here to underline general adaptability because this is also a keyword. It may be paraphrased, that's why I need it. So here I'm going to put a noun. The pigeon because, uh, so second example is pigeon because walls of the city underlined. Buildings are similar to something. Again, I'm going to put a noun. Next, in fact, many urban animals are adapting with unusual something. So you see here, there is no uh, article. That's why probably this noun will be uncountable. Let's get further. And uh, recent changes or developments the word. So Emily Snell wrote, Root studied small urbanized mammal specimens from museums in Minnesota. Guys, why did I underline it? In order uh, not to lose the link between this, uh, the, uh, like not to lose the link in section of part four because it's difficult really. And some students may get confused. They may, they may lose the link. And once you lose the link, you may easily lose the answer because you're not, you're not following the speaker anymore. Okay, so 34, she found the size of their something had increased. Size there increased, this is the keyword that I need. Uh, 35. She suggests this may be due to the need to locate new sources of something, again, noun, and to deal with new dangers. Due to locate sources. These are my words that may be paraphrased. Katarina Miranda focused on the something of urban and rural blackbirds. So here a lot of words. Katarina focus urban rural blackbirds. Okay. She found urban birds were often braver but we're afraid of situations that were, so we're gonna put here adjectives. Adjective one, sorry, one adjective only. So, and the keyword, urban birds, brave, but afraid of situation. What kind of situations exactly? Next, 38. Jonathan Atwell studied how animals respond to urban environments. Again, Jonathan, uh, I underlined Jonathan in order not to lose the link. He found that some animals respond to something by producing lower levels of hormones. Okay, uh, keyword, animals respond, produce lo lower levels of hormones. And 39, Sarah Parton's team found urban squirrels use their something to help them communicate. So Sarah Parton's team, keyword, squirrels keyword, and communicate is keyword as well. And the last question, finally, long-term possibilities, again. Species of animals may develop which are unique to cities. However, some changes may not be, again, adjective, we're gonna put. So keyword is species of animals, develop and changes. So now let's listen to the track, guys. Mm -hmm. So they will give us some time to read, but I'm going to cut this time because we have already analyzed the questions. So we will start already. Now listen. Today we're going to be and answer questions 31 to 40. Hi. Today we're going to be looking at animals in urban environments. And I'm going to be telling you about some research on how they're affected by these environments. Now, in evolutionary terms, urban environments represent huge upheavals. 
The sorts of massive changes that usually happen over millions of years. And we used to think that only a few species could adapt to this new environment. One species which is well known as being highly adaptable is the crow. And there have been various studies about how they manage to learn new skills. Another successful species is the pigeon because they're able to perch on ledges on the walls of city buildings, just like they once perched on cliffs by the sea. But in fact, we're now finding that these early immigrants were just the start of a more general movement of animals into cities and of adaptation by these animals to city life. And one thing that researchers are finding especially interesting is the speed with which they're doing this. We're not talking about gradual evolution here. These animals are changing fast. Let me tell you about some of the studies that have been carried out in this area. So in the University of Minnesota, a biologist called Emily Snellrude and her colleagues looked at specimens of urbanized small mammals, such as mice and gophers, that had been collected in Minnesota and that are now kept in museums there. And she looked at specimens that had been collected over the last hundred years, which is a very short time in evolutionary terms. And she found that during that time, these small mammals had experienced a jump in brain size when compared to rural mammals. Now, we can't be sure this means they're more intelligent, but since the sizes of other parts of the body didn't change, it does suggest that something cognitive was going on. And Snellrude thinks that this change might reflect the cognitive demands of adjusting to city life, having to look in different places to find food, for example, and coping with a whole new set of dangers. Then over in Germany, at the Max Planck Institute, there's another biologist called Katerina Miranda, who's done some experiments with blackbirds living in urban and rural areas. And she's been looking not at their anatomy, but at their behavior. So as you might expect, she's found that the urban blackbirds tend to be quite bold. They're prepared to face up to a lot of threats that would frighten away their country counterparts. But there's one type of situation that does seem to frighten the urban blackbirds, and that's anything new, anything they haven't experienced before. And if you think about it, that's quite sensible for a bird living in the city. Jonathan Atwell in Indiana University is looking at how a range of animals respond to urban environments. He's found that when they're under stress, their endocrine systems react by reducing the amount of hormones such as corticosterone into their blood. It's a sensible seeming adaptation. A rat that gets scared every time a subway train rolls past won't be very successful. There's just one more study I'd like to mention, which is by Sarah Parton and her team. And they've been looking at how squirrels communicate in an urban environment. And they found that a routine part of their communication is carried out by waving their tails. You do also see this in the country, but it's much more prevalent in cities, possibly because it's effective in a noisy environment. So what are the long-term implications of this? One possibility is that we may see completely new species developing in cities. But on the other hand, it's possible that not all of these adaptations will be permanent. Once the animals got accustomed to its new environment, it may no longer need the features it's developed. So now we... <clears throat> so part four is over. Now we're gonna look at the answers. And by the way, guys, my answers, I have missed several, um, several synonyms for these very words, but not a problem. We're gonna cover them on our way. So, answers, synonyms, words that helped me. So, part four, number one. Guys, I didn't write the question because it, it, will, be, it will be too time consuming, so that's why I wrote directly the answers. Number one, 
highly adaptable and in the question it was general adaptability. So they are, para this is paraphrased version and the answers will be crow. So the crow are highly adaptable or they show general adaptability. Question number two, they perch on the walls just like they perch on cliffs. And guys, by the way, the synonym for the word just like was similar to, similar to just like, this is the paraphrase. And the answer will be cliffs. They uh, perch on the walls, just like they perch on the cliffs. Okay, three, especially interesting would be unusual, unusual or especially interesting speed, the, the answer was. And last one, four, uh, next one, sorry. Uh, four, a jump in size and the synonym size had increased. Size of what had increased? Size of brain, brain of birds had increased or jumped in size. They are paraphrased. Okay, five. Uh, look in different places to find food. In the question, it was like eight new sources. In the track, it was look in different places to find food. So this is the paraphrase again. And the question, in the question, uh, sorry, and the answer is food. Next, six, um, in the audio, it was, was looking not at anatomy, but behavior. And in the question, it was focused on. So they were looking at behavior. Focus, looking, they are close synonyms. Okay, seven, anything, sorry, that is a mistake. I think, yeah, that's a mistake. Does seem to frighten it was in the track and it was, and in the question it was, were afraid of situations. They were afraid of situations and, or they do seem to, seem to frighten of new situations that, ha that they haven't experienced yet. Eight, reduce level was in the audio and produce lower level, it was in the question and react was in the audio, respond was in the question. So they respond to stress with a lower level of, level of hormones. And nine, part of communication was in the track and in the question it was used to help to communicate. They use their tail or tails to communicate. And final question, some adaptations in the track, changes in the questions. So these um, changes, however, or on the other hand, are not going to be permanent, permanently stable all the time. So guys, as you can see, all of the, like the whole aisles consist of paraphrase. So you must have a wide range of vocabulary. You must understand these words. Firstly, in order to succeed, you must, you succeed, you must analyze the questions carefully. After analyzing your questions carefully, after understanding the questions, after understanding what to put, where is the keyword? What is the, what is, what is the word that's helping me? What is the paraphrase of this word? Only then you may succeed. And I think this, this is all for today's lesson. I hope that next lesson we will be covering section four, part two and part three. So good luck to you guys, see you next lesson.